Hi folks, I'm Roger from <laughs> Off-Grid Power Solutions and in this episode I'm going to take you through the process of choosing the right MPP controller for your solar panels in your van or your motorhome or boat or cottage or whatever it is that you have. Now I'm talking about the Vectron kit at the moment. I, I, other manufacturers differ in how they will size it up so uh, just bear in mind I'm, I'm talking about Vectron now. Now if you buy a Vectron MPPT controller you will notice that there are two figures stated on all of them. So for example, this one here is a hundred slash 50. This one here is much smaller. It's a hundred slash 20. And the smallest one that we've just sold out of stock is a 75 slash 15. Now I'm going to take you through what these mean. On this one that we have in our rig, this is actually a live rig that we take to shows and things like that. On this one, we have a 150 slash 45. And actually that's too small for what uh, we need. So I'll get to that in a moment. Now, the two figures, in this case, the 100 and these, both of these examples, the 100 stands for the maximum input voltage that the controller can receive from the solar panels. And this is the most important thing that you need to take into account because if you get it wrong, you will probably fry your controller. Now, what margin for error they have, I don't know, and I, I really wouldn't want to say whether it's 10 or 20% or whatever uh, before you actually fry the electrics. Vectron themselves suggest that you build in a bit of a buffer, a margin for error when you're sizing this up. Now, this voltage is the what is known as the VOC, which is the open circuit voltage of your panels. And every panel is different. Every panel has its own VOC and you will need to check what it is on your panels. It is probably on the label at the bottom of the panel. If you are running your rig say on a very cold morning and uh, you're angled so that the panels are actually facing the sun, so you parked at quite an angle, it's nice and cold, the sun is brightly shining, uh, that panel is going to be super efficient, sort of ideal conditions and the voltage may increase above the stated voltage, the normal VOC of the panels. And in such a situation, you could, uh, again, you could fry the, the controller. So you want to build in a reasonable margin for error. I've seen on some of the websites talking about 10%. Uh, we're not sure. Okay, what are the chances that you could be in such ideal conditions? Well, you want to, in my opinion, you want to build in probably at least a 20% margin. Uh, and if you can, a bit more as well. If you really are ever going to be in, in a cloudy place and, you know, if your, ang your panel is always going to be dead flat, then maybe not such a big margin for error. But let's just say you, you want to build in a, a reasonable margin for error and especially if you are connecting your panels in series. So if you have multiple panels and you connect them in series, which is a good idea because that's more efficient. So the same size cable can carry uh, the higher voltage. So you're not increasing the amps coming down the wire. It's a, it's a really good system, especially if you have different size panels and uh, it's sort of a mix and mash of different panels, then everything works quite nicely in series. But just bear in mind that if your panel, for example, is stated at 27 volts and you have three of them, it's not 27 volts that's coming down. You actually have to at least think about 100 volts that's coming down, you know, building in a bit of margin for error. So you could add them all up and build in a margin for error on that. So that covers the voltage, hopefully. If you're in doubt, go big, make sure that you get enough voltage uh, control with it that can handle a reasonable voltage so that you don't fry anything. The second figure is the output amperage from the controller into the batteries. Now, our, our observation has been that when you exceed this, you don't generally fry anything. I've never heard of anything being fried when this has been exceeded. But what happens in our experience is that the controller just simply shuts down. It, it resets itself, goes back to zero, and then starts up again, and then it just bumps up the 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 uh, watts come in, just bump up, and the amps going to the battery bump up until it exceeds it again, and then it resets again, and it just does this again and again and again. That has been our experience when you exceed the output amperage uh, from the controller. And again, I've not heard of somebody 
frying electrics, but that doesn't mean to say that you wouldn't be the unlucky one that does fry your electrics. So uh, again, my suggestion, if you're in doubt, go bigger than you need. Now, we, we put this controller in, this 150-45, we put it in thinking that those are the panels we would have on our, uh, we thought of putting, you know, panels on the stand at our show at our show stand. But in the end, we we put three uh, three hundred watt panels or three or five watt panels on top of a trailer, and so we got nine hundred and fifteen watts that we get off our panels. And what we found is we 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 did on we had a beautiful cool morning, sun shining brightly. We were exceeding that 45 amps. Uh, it kept on resetting. So we we're gonna bump that up. Uh, we we're gonna actually bump it up to, I think an 85. So we give ourselves some margin for error. Uh, you can do the math simply. If you've got, say 600 watts coming down, you divide that by re realistic voltage that the system is outputting at the time. Let's just say for argument's sake, it's 13, so 600 divided by 13, you'll see we were getting very close to this limit and every now and then it was just resetting. So in a nutshell, don't exceed the two figures, uh, especially don't exceed the first one because you could damage equipment and don't exceed the second one because you just keep on resetting it. Let me just talk a little bit about the calculation of the absolute maximum voltage that uh, your panels might put out. Now, it is possible to perform these calculations and there are a lot of examples on the web as to how you will, but not everybody wants to start going into these sort of calculations. And also, for example, you, you might just be stationed at a camping site and your panels are totally flat and very cold morning, but the sun's at quite an angle. so you just not going to have that higher voltage come through. So maybe the easiest is just build in a margin for error. So a 20% if you even more comfortable uh, would be a 30% uh, margin for error. So whatever the VOC is stated on your panels, build in say for example a 20% um, buffer or margin for error and you should be absolutely fine and not fry anything. Uh, even under ex exceptional circumstances, uh, you should be fine under under those sort of uh, decisions. Let me talk a little bit about um, uh, putting your panels in, in series instead of parallel. And uh, if you put your, par your, your panels in parallel, you will not increase the voltage. Obviously, you're increasing the output, the, the watts that come down the line, if you like, or the amps, but you're not increasing the voltage coming from your panels because they're in parallel, so the same voltage. And that that is a very safe way. And the advantage of such a system is, uh, obviously, you can shade one panel completely and the other still works if you've got two panels. And uh, so a lot of people prefer to have them in parallel for that reason. If you have them in series, you will need to take into account the increased voltage because you add up all the voltages and then you have to build in that margin for error. And the advantage of the series is that your voltage increases so your cable can stay small. In parallel, uh, you might increase the amperage coming down the cable so you need a slightly thicker cable. So hopefully that was useful and hopefully this will help you to choose the right controller and uh, we will see you in the next episode. Cheers.